Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this is The Rock. Built by Strato Launch, it is the largest aircraft ever built. Or at least it will be when it actually flies. Right now, they're still taxiing. It requires six engines from a 747. It has a wingspan of over 100 meters. And yes, it does look a bit like two planes bolted together. And you know what? Back in the early days of the space shuttle program, there was something called the Conroy Virtus, which was a concept where they would bolt two B-52 bombers together to make a very large aircraft. Of course, I decided I would try and build this in Kerbal Space Program. Now, this isn't just regular Kerbal Space Program where everything is scaled down by a factor of 10. This is realism overhaul, and I built this thing pretty much exactly the same dimensions, roughly the same wing sizes. I didn't get the wing shape correct, but what I really wanted to do was try and derive the launch vehicle that they have just announced. You see, while Strato Launch have made great progress building this fantastically huge carrier aircraft able to air launch rockets, their program to actually develop a launch vehicle has kind of stalled a couple of times. First, they partnered with SpaceX, who were going to create something called the Falcon Air, or it might have been the Falcon 9 Air, despite it only having four Merlin rocket engines. But at some point, uh, SpaceX decided that it really wasn't to their benefit because it was impinging too much on the design of the regular Falcon 9. So instead, they turned to Orbital Sciences, who of course had previously developed the Pegasus launch system. Now, Pegasus was, of course, quite a revolution when it appeared a few decades ago, able to put small payloads into orbit at relatively low cost for the time. And, of course, you know, it would seem logical to approach the same team, the same company, to develop a bigger, better Pegasus. Pegasus 2 would have been a bit fatter, it would have used solid rockets for the first stage, but it would have had a cryogenic upper stage. But ultimately, this too would come to nothing, as Orbital would be unable to deliver the performance required at the cost desired. So while the development of the aircraft has reached the point where it may fly soon, they still don't have a payload that it can really use. It's able to carry something like 200 tonnes, but you can't just take a regular rocket and sit it on its side and attach it to an aircraft, because they're designed to kind of be stacked vertically. So, Monday's announcement only included one rocket which currently can fly, and that is the Pegasus. But they did point out that they could put three of these Pegasus XL on a single launch, which is kind of cool, I guess, but there has only been one launch like a year. The Pegasus was cost-effective in the early days, but the next launch of a Pegasus rocket is going to cost NASA $55 million to put a few hundred kilograms into orbit. It really has shown its age. It can't compete with modern launch systems. They announced a medium launch vehicle, which is supposedly in development, didn't give very much details other than they expect to fly in 2022, which is really leaving a lot of time where Strato Launch is going to be sitting around doing very little. And for future development, you have the curiously named medium launch vehicle, Heavy, where it's again strapping three of these launch vehicles together to create a uh, heavier stage. It's able to launch six tons into orbit as opposed to 3.4 tons. And then there's their space plane, which they claim will be fully reusable. Well, I'll believe that when I see it. Uh, they're going to have to make that thing 90% fuel tank and fill it with liquid hydrogen. I'm not sure it's possible, but uh, we'll see where it goes. Anyway, making the bold assumption that these drawings are all to scale, we can use the picture of the Pegasus to get a scale on everything and figure out that these uh, medium launch vehicles are about 30 metres long with a tank diameter of 3.6 metres. And then using those rough dimensions, I built a launch vehicle and uh, tried to see how it would work within the game. So again, the game is using realistic rocket engines. It's using the advanced aerodynamics model provided by Ferrum Aerospace. It, uh, the aircraft is the same dimensions, the wing is correct, the engines are the right thrust. But really, what we don't know is what engine is supposed to be used on this. And I only had access to the kind of default engines that are available. I mean, there's a huge number of engines, but I think this is a new engine. They haven't been very specific about what they might use. It's a single engine that's clearly powerful enough. It's comparable to at least four Merlin engines. So that's at least 
two kilonewtons possibly, sorry, two meganewtons possibly, three meganewtons. But also, the pictures they show, show pretty fat tanks. And although, I, you know, you might be able to get away with liquid hydrogen, I don't think they would do that, but liquid methane. You know, methane, liquid oxygen, or methane if you're American, I guess. That might make sense. So maybe this is a new engine they're talking about. We don't know. Anyway, when I did the live stream, I didn't have be as good a measurements, and I ended up using an RD191. Right, so the RD191 is half of an RD180, which is half of a RD170. The RD170 was originally developed for the Energia rocket, which, and it turns out this engine was the most powerful single rocket engine ever built. However, it has four combustion chambers, so many sources still say that the F1 used on the Saturn V is more powerful. Regardless, this thing generates about 2 meganewtons of thrust and it's used in a couple of rockets. Now, to get the fuel to settle correctly, because of course these rockets are not really designed to be launched sideways, I had to use a couple of solid rocket engines to thrust. And it does also need that little wing. It actually helps if you offset the wing from the exact center. So as if you lift the wing up a little and use the mass of the rocket to stabilize, then it becomes a little easier to try and keep this thing lined up. When I was running live, I had several failures where the thing would just like turn 90 degrees and disintegrate just because it was very hard to keep it stable. Now, obviously, real things would have computers and stuff flying it, but I'm pretty much eyeballing it, flying it by the seat of my pants, or at least the seat of my video game pants. So yeah, burning kerosene and liquid oxygen, this thing is accelerating at over 2G. The vehicle that I built had a mass of just under 100 tons, which is well within the payload capacity of this uh, aircraft. It had a 3.1 ton satellite on it. And you know, the first part of this launch is to arc upwards and get it into this ballistic trajectory so that the sec weaker, more efficient second stage can actually push it into orbit. The engine I ended up picking for the second stage actually caused me a lot of trouble because it was... Well, I designed it to be... Sh I picked it because it was short. But it was also a very efficient kerosene liquid oxygen engine. It was also the first staged, you know, combustion cycle engine that was ever designed. And it was very, very underpowered, which meant I had to spend a lot of... Uh, I wasted a lot of Delta V by firing off axes just to keep myself from falling down too quickly and falling back to the planet. But I did eventually make it into a solid orbit. So, you know, I thought that by trying to build these things out in a realistic version of Kerbal Space Program that we would get some idea of what the ultimate vehicle performance would be like. And sure, we got some clues, but honestly, I don't think we got any closer to learning what they could be using or whether they will be viable. And, you know, if you look at what uh, Elon Musk has said, he is not convinced about air launch anymore. He's definitely, he thinks that the advantages are so small uh, and when you consider the amount that you have to specialize your rocket. And he might be right. And SpaceX has made great leaps and bounds with their reusable rocket technology. Uh, the other player in the market that's interesting, I guess, is uh, Virgin Orbit, who have their Launcher 1 rocket that they will launch from an old 747. Now, their payload mass isn't nearly as large as the medium launch vehicle that Strato Launch is talking about, but they're going to be launching very, very soon. And in the meantime, in the next four years, it sounds like the only launch vehicle that Strato Launch can offer is the Pegasus, and that will barely compete with Launcher 1. It certainly won't compete on prices. So I think Strato Launch is kind of in a, an unfortunate position right now that it really has nothing to offer. But Paul Allen does have deep pockets and, you know, he might be able to keep it afloat that long and maybe then it will eventually be a, com a competitor in the market. Who knows? The future is always interesting. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.